We pray that peace may finally come. The Patriarchal Vicar for the Palestinian Territories, Monsignor Shomali, comments on the agreement between Fatah and Hamas, which he says could revive the peace negotiations. Just as it was two years ago, Benedict XVI in the Holy Land. Available in three languages, a new DVD gathers images, words, and emotions. And the youth of the Holy Land are preparing for another meeting with him in Madrid. The cross is something that should enkindle in us affection, love, and wonder. The words of the Custos of the Holy Land on the Feast of the Finding of the Holy Cross, solemnly celebrated in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre on May 7th. The relics of St. Therese back in Jerusalem, around her the faithful of all the Catholic churches of the Holy City. Then the arrival in Bethlehem, where she was warmly welcomed by all. There are already those who call it the Year Zero of Palestine, and who think that the agreement signed between Fatah and Hamas in recent days could mark a turning point in the Arab-Israeli conflict. After four years of fighting and 18 months of negotiations, Mahmoud Abbas has made peace with the rulers of Gaza. Now some would claim that he has the credentials to ask the UN for the recognition of a Palestinian state. Monsignor William Shomali, Palestinian Patriarchal Vicar for the Palestinian Territories and Auxiliary Bishop of Jerusalem, comments in front of our cameras. The historical conflict between Hamas and Fatah will have an end. It will also be a reason to revive the negotiations, because previously the excuse not to negotiate with the Palestinians was the divisions. Now there are no longer any divisions, and this should facilitate the negotiations between the two sides, Israel and the Palestinians. Otherwise, we have two Palestinian entities which must negotiate with Israel, and this is not possible. Monsignor Shomali also addresses the problem of the Christian minority in the Palestinian territories. With Hamas in the government, he says, there will probably be some restrictions regarding alcoholic beverages or Christian religious information. But the vicar claims the freedom of local Christians will be guaranteed. Hamas respects the freedom to construct churches, to practice the culture. Hamas respects the freedom to build churches, to worship freely, and this even if Hamas rules here. But it's by no means certain that Hamas will win the elections that will take place in a year. The precarious balance of this fragile strip of land faces yet more challenges ahead. For the Christians, once again, prayers are needed so that peace may finally come. We must truly live in prayer and in the hope that a true reconciliation will come between Palestinians and Israelis. Israelis need peace, they need secure borders, and they need to live peacefully with dignity. And the Palestinians also have the right to self-determination and to live as equals, within secure borders, just like the Israelis. Two years after the historical visit of Benedict XVI, the youth of the Holy Land are getting ready for a new encounter with the Pope. The appointment, World Youth Day in Madrid, next August. Preparations are well underway, says Father Firas. The youth who have signed up are already 750 from the Galilee and 100 from Jerusalem and the Palestinian territories. We know that the Holy Father visited the Holy Land. He visited the young people. He met with the youth. This trip is an exchange trip that the youth can make. It is also the chance to experience the universal church, the universal language, to know others in the world and to make themselves known, to show that there are young people in the Holy Land who desire life, faith, support, and who wish to be guardians of the sites of the Holy Land. This is the experience that they wish to present in a positive way in this World Youth Day. May 8 to 15, 2009, just as in those days, two years ago, the Holy Land still remembers with emotion the pilgrimage of Benedict XVI, a pilgrimage of faith and hope with eight intense days in Jordan, Israel and the Palestinian territories. It's been for me a decision extremely courageous. It's been the great crisis of Gaza. For me, it was an extremely courageous decision. There was the great crisis of Gaza. And so for the Pope to decide to go to the Holy Land in such a tense situation really required much faith and much courage. 
In Jordan, a clear and precise direction, that of respect and listening to everyone, of the defense of religious freedom, in the warm encounter with the little flock, in the visits to the sanctuaries of Mount Nebo and the Jordan River. He said, I come as a pilgrim, and he came as a pilgrim. From a vision of God in this land, he spoke to both Palestinians and Israelis. A pilgrim who prays and who sees God here. Beginning with this vision, he speaks to the entire human reality, whether it be political or other. He had the urge to present himself as a friend of the Israelis and a friend of the Palestinians. In addition to being a man of dialogue, he was also a man of ecumenism. Words, pictures, emotions gathered together in a documentary to remember, to understand and to pray. A DVD in three languages, Italian, English and Arabic. The place which tradition associates with the finding of the Cross of Christ is located at the lowest point of the ancient Cave of Stone, above which rises today the Basilica of the Holy Sepulchre. In this land, where places are so important because every stone is charged with memory, this has become the center of the solemnity of the Inventio Crucis, the finding of the Cross, which is commemorated in Jerusalem on May 7th. The Custos of the Holy Land, Father Pier Battista Pizzaballa, presided at the Solemn Mass in the Crypt. The friars of the custody make their way among the faithful who flock to the stone steps, their eyes fixed on the relic of the cross that had been lost and was found here by St. Helena. It is said that the mother of Emperor Constantine, a pilgrim to the holy places at the beginning of the 4th century, unearthed the three crosses not far from Calvary and asked the Lord for a sign to recognize the one that had carried the dying Christ. Next to one of them, the miracle of a dead man reborn to life was the answer that Helena was looking for. The sign of the cross of Christ is life, the Custis reminds us in his homily. We can say that every event related to salvation, or rather the way in which God loves the world, has something akin to a woman's heart, or more generally has something similar with the heart. And the door to enter it is that of passion, of love, of the audacity to follow not the trail of calculations or of reasoning, but that of compassion and feeling. Dei ragionamenti, ma quella della compassione e del sentimento. The cross, adds Father Quizzaballa, opens the entire mystery of man without leaving anything out. The cross cannot be understood. It is something that should enkindle in us affection, love, wonder, and emotion. Arrivare, regnare. Rose petals pave the way for the relic of the wood that carried the body of the Lord. The procession departs from the place of the finding, going up from the crypt and then turning around three times around the edicule of the anastasis. The Custis recollects himself in prayer in the empty tomb. For a few minutes the cross is laid on the stone of the sepulchre, the site of the resurrection, and then goes back again to be shown to the faithful and bless them. Only a few days after Holy Week and the Easter Sunday celebrations, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre continues to rally the faithful and pilgrims who again, in the Feast of the Refound Cross, find in this place the physical memory of those stones where everything happened. St. Therese of the Child Jesus was greeted with great joy and devotion on her return to Jerusalem, where she arrived less than two months ago, at the beginning of a pilgrimage that brought her relics in a long tour across the sites of the Holy Land. Therese returned from May 2nd to 9th, and she has gathered around her, around her example of a young woman capable of bearing witness to Jesus, even in the small things, many of the Catholics in Jerusalem. Exposed in the Church of St. Savior, 
where Saturday, May 7th, representatives of Catholic parishes gathered for Mass celebrated in the Maronite Rite. The saint arrived the same evening in the Melkite Church. The devotion of the faithful to St. Therese is great even in the Church of the Greek Catholic Rite, where on Sunday after Mass, according to an old Byzantine custom, the Bishop Monsignor Zere knelt to have the relics of the saint pass over his head. Many then lined up in the procession that led the relics to the Maronite community among the rose petals and music of the scouts. Then again, once arrived at its destination, the joy of being able to lay a hand on the casket with her remains, the celebration of greeting the saint with prayers and songs. A celebration that was repeated the following afternoon in Bethlehem, where many people greeted the arrival of Therese. Flags, many children, women in traditional dress, the streets were crowded to welcome the relics, carried by hand by students of the Terra Sancta College in Bethlehem, while the girls of St. Joseph's School threw rose petals and raised banners with the face of Therese. The Church of the Carmel, where the relics were placed beside those of Blessed Mary of Jesus Crucified, was left open until the evening to allow everyone to offer their own prayers. The next day, many again accompanied Therese in procession in the Old City to St. Catherine's for the Mass. Therese is the saint of the Child Jesus. We are very happy to have her here in the city of the Child Jesus, said the pastor of Bethlehem, Father Marwan, during his homily. One last procession finally led the relics to the milk grotto, although the joy and the singing of the Christians in Bethlehem continued even after her departure. <laughs>